So this is taken from uh, the virtual telescope project. And what you're seeing here is you see there's a, a bright dot at the center. It's kind of faint. And you see the mouse click below. Now, if you see those streaks, those streaks are actually background stars. Because the asteroid has moved very fast, so fast and differently around the Earth than the stars, the stars look like they're streaking by, kind of like you were to stare out a car window and focus on one distant object where everything else is zooming past you. It's kind of a similar effect. So it's that actually small bright dot at the center that doesn't appear to change any shape or moving that they're focusing on. And so these telescopes are focused on it as it's been going around the Earth, taking critical data to see what's going on, to measure its speed, to get improvements of its or orbit, uh, and hopefully to improve the data so that when it comes around potentially again, because it will, we have a better understanding of its orbit. And so these are images, from, uh, we're seeing kind of flashes every now and then, and so I'm guessing that's the, a couple of different telescopes showing, uh, from, from Im images from different telescopes showing what they're seeing. But are these, are these telescopes in South America and this uh, asteroid is like three and a half thousand k's away? That's right. So these sorts of things, these are telescopes would mostly be focused in Chile. There will be some in Argentina as well, but most of them are taken from Chile. Uh, and that's uh, where it's focused on. Uh, and then it will be followed up here in Australia later on. So even though the close point will be there, so you can see someone just moved the mouse to help you point out where it is. <laughs> so um, so yep. we'll kind of get a, a refreshing image in a, in a second here. So that's another image. And again, it's still there. Um, we'll be able to see it for another week or two. Um, it will just get fainter and fainter. Now, even if it was nighttime here, even if you're in Chile, you wouldn't see it with the naked eye. So it's still a really small asteroid. It's only five meters wide. So as you said, it's you know size of a truck or something like that. So at 3,600 kilometers, that's still a pretty faint object to see. Now, the key here, though, is it is 3,600 kilometers. This is closer than our geosynchronous orbit satellites. So the satellites, a lot of our weather we get from and other things, those are 10 times further away than this object was. And so this is kind of why we say we need to track these things. These things can come relatively out of nowhere without knowing them and get awfully close to the Earth. You, you kind of don't get closer to the Earth unless you hit the Earth, which, again, this one hasn't and won't. Okay, so as in your experience, is this as close as you've seen an asteroid come? Pretty much. I mean, but besides hitting the Earth, in terms of knowing the asteroid and monitoring it, we don't get closer. Um, I think the good thing in all of this said, it's only five meters wide, but almost 10 years ago to the date, in early February 10 years ago, there was a 20 meter asteroid, so only four times bigger. Now that hit over northern Russia and Chebolinsk, and when it hit, it created a huge sonic boom. It destroyed thousands of windows. A lot of people were injured from flying glass. There, there was no serious injuries or fatalities, but it was a huge reminder that these things don't have to be very big to do a lot of damage because you're not worried about this thing hitting the earth and creating some massive crater. It's as it hits the earth's atmosphere, it detonates and explodes and produces that shock wave. Now this one, if it were to hit the Earth, would produce some sort of shock wave, but it really wouldn't do that much damage. You'd definitely notice it and feel it, but life would go on. And so, yeah, so you said that it's actually smaller than the one that hit that Russian area a decade ago. That's right, so it's about four times smaller. That one was, we think, about 18 to 20 meters. This one is about five meters, so definitely smaller, but nonetheless, just as important, you know, being found only seven days ago by an amateur in Ukraine, um, Borisov, in fact, he was famous for finding only the second comet from a different solar system, what we call an interstellar comet. Uh, it just shows that even with professional searches, you still need an amateur to find this like you're seeing here, that bright dot in the center of your screen. So where can you tell, fill us in on any of this and maybe you can't, but what, where did it come from and what is it? Is it something that's broken off a planet or formed somewhere else in the universe? So, yeah, so this is a, a type of asteroid from what we call the Apollo asteroid. So this is a group of asteroids that there aren't, it, when you picture asteroids that are kind of in the main belt between Mars and Jupiter, the Apollo asteroids have a very distinct orbit around the sun. Now, this orbit takes them near the Earth every time, so they commonly get near the Earth. So all of the asteroids we generally worry about come from this group of asteroids that are in a very regular orbit around the sun, but that regular orbit comes near the orbit of Earth. And because it's a little bit uh, elliptical, so it's a little bit more oval in its orbit, sometimes it can cross the path of Earth, sometimes it just gets really close. And so this whole family are the ones that we want to see. But because it 
orbits around the sun much like earth does often these asteroids can actually be towards the sun in the sky meaning they're kind of like in our blind spot we don't really have telescopes that can see right near it so you have to wait for it to come away from the sun meaning we could often miss them if they're just sitting there now generally the composition is mostly of a, of a what we call a stony meteor or a stony asteroid so bits of rock you would imagine that make up a planet or a moon um so that they can break apart now um still can do damage as it hits the earth it's not just one solid chunk of metal it does have a lot of iron in it but because there's so many of them and so many that we don't know of these small sizes we want to keep an eye on and so this one yeah wasn't spotted uh, by uh, people here on earth until a week or so ago is that because they were we were blinded by the sun or what what's the reason it wasn't picked up earlier so, so a couple of reasons. Yeah, so it was near the sun, which meant it was, it was kind of hard to see until it got further away from the sun. It's also small, only five meters. You're only reflecting sunlight. The only way you see this is sunlight bouncing off the asteroid and us detecting it. Same reason we see the moon or Mars. But, you know, this is five meters. The moon is uh, almost the size of Australia. It's over 3000 kilometers wide. So these things in terms of brightness are really, really faint. So you need either a really big telescope which means that you need lots of them to survey the sky or you need to look deeper. And this kind of becomes the problem. We don't worry professionally about the asteroids that are one to 10 kilometers. We kind of know where those are. We could see them really far away. The smaller ones, you need a really big telescope into me monitoring the sky. Now there is something that's gonna be coming online in about a year from now called the Vera Rubin Observatory in Chile, which Australia is a partner with. And it's gonna be surveying the nighttime sky every three nights and the telescope is eight meters wide. This is a gigantic telescope. So it's gonna be able to see really faint objects really far away. So things like this hopefully should be caught earlier. And just re refresh us on what happened. I think it was just in the last 12 months where we were able to, or the <laughs> scientists were able to land something the size of a vending machine on an asteroid, I think it was, and to tr try to alter the course of that. Just refresh us on what happened with that. That's right. This is called the DART mission, the double asteroid redirection test. And that happened in September. It was only a few months ago, as you said. Uh, and th this was, yes, testing. Could we deflect an asteroid? And what this did was, you had this refrigerator sized probe traveling 24,000 kilometers an hour crashed into an asteroid. And the purpose was, could we deliberately steer or alter the path of the asteroid? We didn't want to fling it out into space. We just wanted to see, could we nudge it enough that in its path around the second asteroid, we can measure it. And not only did we measure it, we measured it that it actually shifted it three times bigger than we thought. So it did an orbit around the bigger asteroid about every 12 hours. We shortened it to every 11 and a half hours. So we shaved essentially 30 minutes off its orbit. Now that's actually a big shift in time and therefore a big shift in space and energy. And you may say 30 minutes isn't a lot, but if you hit an asteroid a year away and you shift it 30 minutes every time, that becomes a really big difference in terms of its path. That makes the difference of it being 3,000 kilometers away to 10 or 15,000 kilometers away. Yeah, so but, the dark probe ship, yeah, but the, the, this one was only detected a week ago. Would, would we have had enough time if this was a big one and it was headed for and, Earth? And, this, and you're right, this is the exact key. Dark only works if we know about it, right? You know, Just as we have nature in the morning telling us about the weather to make predictions so we can inform ourselves later in the day, we need telescopes to survey fainter and further. And this is what a lot of the push was, is to say, dark only works if you know about it far enough. We couldn't do anything for 2023 BU if it posed a risk. So you need to have these things that can find it months to years away and those options to divert it as well. So we are finally doing something about it. I think this is the good thing. We are finding ways of defending the earth and you know, uh, revenging the dinosaurs. We're, 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 we're doing what the dinosaurs couldn't do, but we have to know about it.